uh, let's just get started. And I want to bring uh, the first company to the stage. Uh, first of all, I would like to introduce their mentor, Mr. Bruce McCockendale, VP Technology at Symantec. Bruce, you can join the panel right now. And um, Dimitri and Nimrod from Big ID, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, uh, thank you, YL. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Dimitri Sirota. I'm the CEO of uh, Big ID. Uh, Big ID is innovating in a data protection privacy space where we're basically bringing to market the first enterprise platform for protecting arguably the most important asset that an or organization has, which is their customer data. So the team is here in Tel Aviv. Uh, the company was founded at the very end of last year. We raised $2 million in seed funding. The two founders are right here, myself and Nimrod. Um, my background is I've done two prior security startups. My last one was sold about two years ago for nine figures. Uh, since then, I ran security strategy at CA, which is where I met Nimrod. Nimrod basically ran all the identity management products for CA, which is a very large portfolio encompassing directory, identity governance, etc. Now, at CA, we basically started thinking about what is the problem that uh, exists today vis-a-vis uh, -vis identity data. And so what we saw is that while there's a tremendous number of technologies for the management of identities and access, and while there's a tremendous amount of cyber technologies, the problem of data loss for identity data hasn't gotten better. In fact, it's gotten worse. So last year alone, there was 1.2 billion identity records stolen from enterprises, and that cost them $140 billion in direct costs, plus all the indirect costs, including loss of customer uh, loyalty, uh, penalties from regulators, um, lost business, class action liability, et cetera. But that's not the only concern that enterprises face. In addition to that, they also face uh, new privacy regulations. Some of you may have heard of the EU Privacy Shield and General Data Protection Regulation. What's interesting about this is it's changed the game in around privacy. Historically, very little penalties in around privacy. Today, 4% of your global revenues when these laws take effect. And this is happening around the world. FCC, FTC, SEC are starting to issue larger and larger fines and sanctions in the US. China, Russia, Canada, Australia, Holland, Germany, all of these countries are introducing new privacy regulations, forcing companies to do new things. Oh, and that's the end. No, I'm just kidding. There we go. Uh, so in terms of what the opportunity is for building a new technology for um, enterprise identity data protection and privacy, there's four things that we uncovered from our conversations with end users. One is the tools today for finding data are insufficient. They don't handle the privacy uh, regulations um, in the way that they require you to understand what data belongs to what user. So understanding the dark data in the organization, where it is, is critical for both protection and privacy. Understanding the risk of that data is absolutely critical so that an organization can focus on the data that is potentially highest risk. They want to know about that and remediate that before it becomes toxic. Then they also want to understand how the data is getting used. That's critical for satisfying regulators, for satisfying their own compliance requirements, for satisfying their data audits. And then last, lastly, in terms of bringing together the stakeholders in around uh, personal data protection and privacy, that includes risk, that includes uh, security, that includes uh, privacy. How do you give them an integrated command center that they could all leverage? So in terms of the use cases that we've identified, everything here is what we'll be achieving in our, in our seed stage funding, and everything here today is next to impossible to achieve with existing tools. So that includes things like building out a PII inventory, an identity graph, if you will. That's critical for being able to satisfy data subject access, uh, right, of, um, um, right, right, of, uh, right to be forgotten, uh, notification requirements, things of that sort, providing consent. These are all things that you need today that don't exist today. And you see where the European flags are? Those are things that are going to be required with GDPR where there's an opportunity to essentially define a new category of product. Nimrod? So the first question that comes up is how, how do we achieve that? How do we achieve that with a single product? So Big ID is basically a security data analytics uh, solution. We collect information, we mine the information in your organization, both from your structured and unstructured data uh, from your logs to understand how, where the data is located and how it's being accessed. We analyze and learn this data in order to build uh, the information that is needed to solve the, these problems around security and data protection. Building that uh, identity inventory uh, graph that tells you for each identity where the data is located, 
telling you uh, what is the risk profile of that information and how is it being accessed so you can analyze and understand usage violations, which is very critical in the uh, privacy world. Uh, how, is your marketing uh, application accessing data it's not supposed to access? Is data from Germany outside of Germany? And lastly, be providing it in a very visual and easy way to be consumed by the business users that need to access it, the security analyst, the privacy analyst, and the risk and compliance. So we're putting a lot of effort in the user experience. We want to make it a very simple solution to be consumed and used by those business users. And you can see from the data that it's really the emphasis is a lot about where the data is located, which regulations apply to it, and what is the risk associated with it. This is a fairly new space. We believe that this is going to be a category on its own, very similar uh, to categories that we've seen today in the market. We've seen a very natural progression in both the endpoint protection uh, space, moving into EDR, leveraging analytics in that process, same in, uh, in uh, SIM and user entity behavior analytics. And we see this progression happening in data protection and, and applying analytics in order to prov uh, provide a very effective solution in the privacy space. Even though the problem uh, is very strong, right now there are uh, hardly any uh, solutions out there. Uh, so we believe there is a very big opportunity. And that's the end. And here is our challenge. So do I just read this? So our challenge is, um, the one that we kind of identified, is one of the things that's unique about this is traditionally in the uh, DLP space or kind of the data kind of discovery space, secu there's security buyers. When you start extending it into privacy, there's additional potential budget centers and buying centers. These could include uh, security, uh, or sorry, they could include risk, compliance, uh, data, data science office. So anyway, so these are one of the things that we're kind of uh, grappling with and understanding, do we go after all of them, do we go after one of them, et cetera. Thanks a lot, uh, Dimitri and Nimrod. Big idea. We're going to start with the discussion session, and uh, we'll let the mentor uh, speak first. No, you want it? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Um, one of the things that I got most excited about when I first read about your product was I'm working on products and I have to worry at the last minute about any PII I'm collecting in my product and whether it's being handled correctly and it's the last thing I want to worry about as a product architect, right? And so I see that as a great opportunity. I, th I thought to myself as soon as I read your summary, boy, I wish I had this because then I wouldn't have to worry about that in my security audit and I wouldn't have that last minute thing to, to deal with. Um, I was fascinated when you, you mentioned monitoring which applications are using the PII. And I, that, of course, sprung a whole bunch of ideas. If you know which applications are accessing it and at what frequency, you have an opportunity for anomaly detection to tell when there's potentially a breach. Have you thought about how you would integrate with uh, incident management systems, security, incident response, and, and products like that? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, the, the, more, the most natural uh, way of integrating is uh, feeding those uh, solutions with those incidents that come in. Um, our focus is not necessarily in detecting the breaches. Uh, there are uh, user behavior analytics tools that uh, focus on data ex uh, exfiltration and this type of uh, solution, but we are uh, analyzing uh, anomalies in the sense that we can monitor and see if a new application has come up or an application changes, changes its behavior we can notify the uh, risk and compliance team and the privacy and the security teams to tell them that there is a, a problem that needs to be handled. Uh, you know, there was in Israel a recent, uh, uh, just in the news this week, about a company that has um, two branches. One uh, is a cellular branch and one is a retailer. And they were using data in the, in the retailer, they were using data from their uh, uh, cellular uh, uh, branch. And that was a violation, and they're looking to get sued, uh, basically criminal charges uh, against them. So this is uh, where we can identify this type of situation, and then uh, notify through those systems or through service desk uh, directly uh, the, 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 the stakeholders that need to get uh, that information. So um, I guess for the entrepreneurs in the audience, the way we look at an investment, we look at five factors. So we look at market, we look at the IP, the solution, how unique it is. We look at the go-to-market strategy, we look at the team, and we look at the co-investors. So think about five criteria for us to get interested. I think you guys did a good job in describing the market. So you say it's broad, it's big, you know, 
even got a little bit view of the competition in the landscape. I think uh, you also define the use cases, which is the problem you're trying to solve. I think given the time, I don't know that you did a good job at trying to articulate. It, it, it seems like you're trying to do a lot of stuff. And uh, is it in a Splunk for identity? I, I was trying to figure out, you know, well, how unique is the IP or somebody can just come in and do that and all of a sudden just leave you out. Okay. You, say, you said a structure and a structure, okay, jump to this plunk to me, or a little bit of that. Uh, when it came to go to market, did not talk much about it. The comment about integrating and others is, you know, as in a startup, you can never, you, you control your own, your first few deals because you need to get them done and get momentum to get reference accounts so that other people do that. But as one of the biggest blind spots for entrepreneurs is creating the ecosystem around you, that who's gonna take you to market? Who, even though today may not, you may not be reachable, but you have to have a map of saying who's gonna co-market, who's gonna co-sell, who's gonna resell, who's gonna OEM the solution so that you get to a broader market opportunity. So the go-to-market was a little bit unclear. Team, it was good, good credentials. You, you done, done it before, so you instill a certain level of, of um, confidence. The part that did not come across was, you know, I'm looking for validation. You know, we all think, may think, oh, this is a great area, but who's actually either testing your solution, who's helping you do the early design with you? So who's your early customer or your betas? That brings a lot of credibility. You mentioned a little bit, oh, we have this company that's dealing with the seller. Name the company, give the credibility, because it doesn't mean what the investor thinks or the entrepreneur thinks. It's the third party that's willing to put their time and money to actually do that. That didn't come across. Okay, so let so, me try to answer. And then the last thing, so I'm yep. trying to give you the five areas. And okay. <laughs> from an investor standpoint, um, you didn't say anything, who was your uh, either uh, early investor, or who, because okay. that brings credibility, because I'm looking for a for a, an ecosystem of investors that are gonna help me do the heavy lifting. So right. again, so market, I'll answer IP, the product and I'll let you answer the go-to-market. Market, IP, go-to-market, team, and the right. investor Do you ecosystem. want us to answer that? Or no, no, I'm just giving yeah, you yeah, feedback. Oh, okay. Part, okay. part of the idea either. was to give everybody, yeah. not you, yeah, okay. sure. I can think of that. So anyway, it's just a comment. Yeah, thank you. Okay. But maybe here are the panelists. Oh, I got questions. Um, <laughs> uh, probably two okay. uh, off the bat. Um, as an operator, uh, if we make the assumption that our asset databases are at best 50, 60 percent accurate, there's a lot of data within our environment that is unknown. Technically, how do you discover that data sitting in a database that I don't even know about that could very well be impactful okay. from a privacy standpoint? So the, the way that we do the discovery is uh, unique. Uh, it's not uh, similar to what uh, data protection solutions typically do. Uh, we don't try to uh, analyze any type of data like data protection. We are very focused on identity data, on, uh, on uh, PII. PII is always uh, related or identifiable to an identity. That's the definition of PII. So we start with the identities uh, that you want to protect. We start with your list of customers. So uh, organizations typically know, have a, a number of identity system of records where they store those identities. Um, and, and they know where they collect it. That's their starting point. It might be 20% of where the data is. We then um, uh, connect to those known systems of record. We analyze that list of attributes. We give an identification score for each of the attributes. So we know what to look for. So we know that if we find, a, first of all, there are well-known attributes that are PII by definition. And there are attributes that are highly correlating to an identity. So basically, uh, they uniquely identify a user. We identify those attributes and sets of attributes, so pseudo PII and we search for those values specifically in your uh, databases and in your repositories. We also, uh, and that would be one of our routes to market, work with um, DLP and data protection solution that already scan the environment, and that limits where we need to look for because we only look for their findings and we search those uh, files or, or database tables where there, there is PII uh, located. And when we find that information, we immediately know who it's uh, related to because we were looking for Dimitri's social security number, when we find it, we know it's not a phone number. He always uses it. So, uh, so we get the correlation immediately and we build that identity inventory. So we know for each identity where the data is located. So that is the, uh, now when we find uh, an identity information, we look in the proximity and that is a, a pretty standard uh, data mining process. We look in the proximity of that data. So if we find a row in the database, we look at the attributes, the additional attributes in that row. We add them to the profile. 
we calculate their uh, identification uh, score, and we know if they are highly identifiable, we keep searching for them as well. Right, but again, if I don't know the database that's sitting underneath the developer's desk because he inappropriately took a snapshot of production, carried it over. Great. How do you identify that workstation? So, uh, and this without is not a DLP. No, uh, yeah, without a DLP, just like uh, any other solution. So we uh, we discover the, uh, the the systems through Nmap or some uh, right. network, network discovery. Network scans identifying SQL connections to. Then and then we connect to it through with uh, you know uh, standard uh, okay. and, and scan it. This is basically done today by database activity sure. monitoring. The, the second question is really, and, th and that will be the last question. Sorry, thanks. <laughs> no, that, that <laughs> that's it. Moving on. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, uh, Big ID. Thank you. Thank you. We we'll continue the discussion later. And thank you, of course, your mentor, Bruce McCockendale from Cementex. <laughs>